So today we are going to talk about macrocytic megaloblastic anemias, right? So we will first of all dissect these three terms one by one. That what is when we say patient has anemia, what is really meant? And when we say our patient has macrocytic anemia, it means what are the macrocytes? And if, if I say my patient has macrocytic megaloblastic anemia, then I must make it clear what is meant by megaloblast. So one by one, we'll discuss these three terms. That if I say I have a patient who has macrocytic megaloblastic anemias, we have to be very clear what I mean by anemia, what I mean by macrocytes, and what I mean by megaloblast. So how do you define anemia? Okay, my friend is saying that uh, anemia is defined as decrease in hemoglobin concentration. That's a right definition for practical purposes. But ideally, because uh, hemoglobin concentration can be disturbed by the changes in body fluid volume. So that is not a perfect definition. For example, my hemoglobin concentration is right now absolutely normal. But if you intravenously give me a lot of fluids, hemoglobin concentration will become less. Do you think I have truly anemia? No. Or let's suppose my hemoglobin concentration is right now absolutely normal. And I get lost into a desert. And I get dehydrated. Apparently due to loss of fluid, hemoglobin concentration will go up. But truly speaking, total red cell mass has gone up in the body? No. So basically, when we talk about anemia, ideally speaking, first ideally speaking, and then practically speaking. Ideally speaking, anemia should be defined a condition in which there is reduced total body red cell mass. Anemia is a condition when someone has reduced total, total body red cell mass right in the total body when your total mass total red cell mass is reduced you say there is anemia but because to determine every person's total red body red cell mass is a difficult way so for practical purposes we define anemias as reduced another way to define anemia is reduced packed cell volume, reduced packed cell volume, is that right? Let us suppose uh, there is a person who has normal total red cell mass. If you take his blood into a container, right, you have put his blood into this container, person with the normal red cell mass in the total body and you add to this blood anticoagulant and let the RBCs settle down. Is that right? And once RBCs will settle down, all the RBCs will be packed together, right? They will be... Now let's suppose this was a total blood volume. And this is the volume occupied by the packed red blood cell. Packed cell volume. This packed cell volume, right? is reduced whenever you have anemia. For example, if you have anemia and your total red cell mass in the body is less, then of course, in a given sample of blood, packed cell volume will also reduce. So we can say, because it is easy to measure, so we can say anemia is also defined as reduced packed cell volume. Another term for the packed cell volume is hematocrit. Another term for the packed cell volume is hematocrit. So anemia can also be defined as reduced hematocrit. Is that right? This is packed cell volume. Now within this packed cell volume in all these red blood cells, of course they are having which molecules? They are packed with hemoglobin. Is that right? Now, another way to talk about anemia is reduced hemoglobin concentration as he said initially. So ideally speaking, when we say there is anemia, 
we should talk about this to reduced total body red cell mass. But because it cannot be measured easily in the laboratories, so they usually depend on packed cell volume or hematocrit or hemoglobin concentration. When someone has truly anemia, then total red cell mass in the body will be reduced. When total red cell mass in the body will be reduced, of course, packed cell volume will be also reduced and then hemoglobin concentration will be also reduced. Is that right? But these two values have one problem. Hemoglobin concentration especially. You know what? If we add too much fluid volume to the body, hemoglobin will become diluted. And it will look as if there is anemia, but there may not be anemia. Is that right? So all those conditions in which body retains water, there is hemodilution. And there may be spurious anemia, not a true anemia. Is that right? In the same way, there is another problem with the hemoglobin concentration measurement. If you have severe dehydration, hemoconcentration may occur. Am I clear? So this, these two things are very important when we are measuring the RBC related with the packed cell volume or hemoglobin concentration that person is having no excessive fluid losses or no excessive fluid retentions. Am I clear? Now, so when I say that my patient has macrocytic megaloblastic anemias, first thing I explained the patient has anemia. Patient has anemia means packed cell volume is less and hemoglobin concentration is less than normal. Is that right? Secondly, what is macrocyte? And what is megaloblast? So who will tell me what is macrocyte? Yes, please. Macrocytes. When the, uh, when, when, when the RBC has a, has a larger shape. When RBCs are larger than normal. The volume occupied by single RBC is larger than normal red blood cell. Is that right? We call it that there is macrocytes, right? Normocytes, what is the volume in normal site? Normocyte, mean corpuscular volume, volume occupied by one red blood cell. Normally how much it is? It is between, yes, it is on average, it is 86 femtoliter, femtoliter. Femtoliter is very small, it is 10 to the raised power minus 15 liters. Of course, RBC is very, very small. So normal RBC is? On average, 86 femtoliter plus negative 10. For practical purposes, we say that from 76 to 96, 76 to 96 femtoliter is the normal volume of one single red blood cell. That is called mean corpuscular volume. If RBCs are smaller than the, if mean car MCV is less than 76, it is microcyte. If MCV is more than 96, then it is macrocyte. So in our patient, when I say there is macrocytic problem, it means mean corpuscular volume is more than 96 femtoliter or we can make a round figure, we can say that mean corpuscular volume is more than 100 femtoliter. Is that right? So in this term, when I say my patient has macrocytic megaloblastic anemia, it means such my patient has packed cell volume less than normal. My patient has hemoglobin concentration less than normal and individual RBC is larger than normal. It means RBC number will be very, very less. It is just like this situation that here I'm putting the normal person's blood, here I am putting my patient's blood and here is bone marrow house where blood cells are produced. Now, normal person blood, let's suppose packed cell volume is normal person 0.45. What I mean by packed cell volume is 0.45 means if one unit blood is there, right, 0.45 volume is occupied by the red blood cells. Now this is normal and let's suppose this normal person has packed cell volume of 
और हमेटोक्रेट ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव विद हीमोग्लोबिन हमेटोक्रेट इज फोर्टी फाइव हीमोग्लोबिन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज लेट सपोज फिफ्टीन ग्राम पर डी एल दिस इज नॉर्मल पर्सन नाउ आई पुट माई पेशेंट द ब्लड ऑफ द पर्सन हुज मैक्रोसिटिक मगैलो ब्लास्टिक अनिमियाज इन दिस केस टोटल ब्लड विल बी सेम बट पैक्ट सेल वॉल्यूम इज डेंजरसली लो वेन पैक्ट सेल वॉल्यूम इज लो इट मीन्स अनिमिया इज देयर देन ऑफकोर्स हिमोग्लोबिन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन आउट ऑफ टोटल ब्लड इज ऑल्सो रिड्यूस अगेन दिस इज अनिमिया बट वेन आई से दैट द मैक्रोसिटिक अनिमिया इट मीन्स द इंडिविजुअल आरबीसीज आर लार्जर वेरी गुड नाउ यू रियली अंडरस्टैंड इट सो इन मैक्रोसिटिक अनिमियाज Paxel volume is less than normal. Hemoglobin concentration is less than normal, but volume of individual RBC is more than normal. Is that right?